Hello, my name is Jorge Cortez from the Department of Leukemia at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. I am here at the ASCO meeting 2017 in Chicago, and I'm presenting a study on a randomized uh, trial conducted uh, multi-center, multinational of patients with newly diagnosed CML randomized to receive either bosutinib or imatinib. And this is on behalf of my colleagues that participated in this trial. As you know, bosutinib is a uh, very potent tyrosine kinase inhibitor. It's very active against ABLE, although it does not have any activity against CKIT or PDGF receptor. And uh, the drug has demonstrated clinical activity and it's actually approved in many parts of the world for patients with CML in all stages of the disease that have received prior therapy. And there was a prior randomized study comparing it to imatinib for frontline setting. And although the primary endpoint was not met, the primary endpoint being complete cytogenetic response in that study, all of the other efficacy endpoints were met and it showed earlier responses and deeper responses and fewer transformations. So the objective of this study was to further assess the efficacy and the safety of basutinib in this setting of newly diagnosed patients with chronic myeloid leukemia in the chronic phase. So the design of the study is very similar to this uh, other prior study. The, that study was called the BELLA trial. This one we call the BEFORE trial. There are two primary differences between this study and the prior study. The first one is the dose of bosutinib that was used. Here we're using 400 milligrams daily. The dose that is approved for the salvage setting is 500 milligrams daily. The other important difference is the primary endpoint. Here we focused on major molecular response at 12 months, and this is in keeping with our modern approach to CML where we focus more on these deeper uh, responses. So patients were randomized one to one to receive bosutinib 400 milligrams daily or imatinib 400 milligrams daily. A total of 536 patients were randomized with uh, 268 each on these arms. And there are a number of secondary endpoints that have to do with efficacy and safety, and they're all the usual endpoints for this disease. The populations were very well balanced. This is a median age of uh, a little over 50 years. This is a little older than other studies that have been done in this setting, uh, randomized studies of imatinib versus other drugs. There's about a 20% of the population that have high-risk SOCAL uh, scores. And other than that, this, uh, this is a very typical population for this, uh, for this setting. The primary endpoint in this study was met. The rate of major molecular response at 12 months was 47% for the patients that received bosutinib as initial therapy, compared to 37% for the patients that received imatinib. That difference is statistically significant. The odds ratio is 1.55. So this was clearly better for patients receiving bosutinib. Importantly, this is true uh, in all SoCal risk uh, groups. It was, uh, there was a benefit in the low, in the intermediate, and in the high risk. And it is also very important that these molecular responses at three months that we care too much about, uh, less than 10% transcripts, uh, was also significantly better for the patients that received bosutinib. We had 75% of patients achieving these, uh, these uh, results compared to 57% of patients treated with, uh, with imatinib. The complete cytogenetic response by 12 months, although this time it was a secondary endpoint, it is important to emphasize that uh, this endpoint was also met in this study. So we have 77% of patients in the bosutinib arm compared to 66% patients on the imatinib arm. Here you can see that there is, over time, as we assess the responses at three and six and nine and 12 months, there is a significant benefit uh, in favor of bosutinib, not only for the major molecular responses, but you can see that there is numerical, numerical uh, difference in favor of the deeper responses, the MR4s and the MR4.5s. And by 12 months, we already see that these differences become statistically significant. So for example, the MR4s, we have 21% of patients uh, at 12 months on bosutinib having this response, compared to only 12% uh, in the uh, imatinib arm. This is too early to assess uh, formally event-free survival, uh, but the number of events, the cumulative incidence of events that define event-free survival has been lower for the patients receiving bosutinib, 3.7%, compared to the patients receiving imatinib, where 6.4% of these patients have already uh, had an event. 
the overall survival again is still uh, the short the follow-up is short and as you can expect the survival is good for both arms it is 99.6 percent for the bosutinib pa treated patients and 97.9 for the uh, imatinib treated patients there have been one death in the bosutinib arm and six deaths in the imatinib uh, arm uh, 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 trial there have been fewer transformations to uh, accelerated and blast phase in the bosutinib arm there's few in both arms but uh, fewer uh, in the bosutinib arm, with four of them uh, in bosutinib, six uh, in the imatinib, uh, and uh, most of these transformations have been to accelerated phase. The safety profile is kind of as expected for the two drugs. Uh, we know that diarrhea occurs uh, frequently with uh, bosutinib. 70% of patients uh, had diarrhea, but uh, fortunately very few of these were grade three or four and the lower dose helped uh, minimize these, but uh, very few patients discontinued therapy because of diarrhea, two on each one of the two uh, arms. We also know that liver toxicity, particularly elevation of transaminase, was uh, higher with the bosutinib. Uh, these were again overwhelmingly grade one or grade two. Fewer grade three and very few of these patients discontinued therapy because of uh, liver toxicity. Uh, most of these were transient and there were no associations with elevation of bilirubin. Uh, on the other hand, with imatinib, we see more musculoskeletal symptoms and uh, more periorbital edema than we see with, uh, with bosutinib. So in conclusion, this study uh, demonstrates a significant benefit for bosutinib compared to imatinib as initial therapy for CML. The primary endpoint was met with a significantly higher rate of major molecular response at uh, 12 months. In addition, other endpoints, such as the rate of complete cytogenetic response by 12 months, was also significantly better. The responses uh, are uh, earlier with basutinib, they are deeper, there are fewer uh, transformations. And uh, importantly, the safety profile is very manageable with bosutinib, with the most common toxicities being diarrhea and liver toxicity, but most frequently grade one and grade two, transient, manageable, and very seldom leading to treatment discontinuation. So I think what these results show is that bosutinib may become uh, a new and welcome treatment option for patients with newly diagnosed uh, CML uh, in the chronic phase. So this ends my presentation, and I thank you for your attention.